Star, and welcome to Steam Team Tuesdays. My name is Kristen, and this is week three of the Backyard Bug series. Here on Steam Team Tuesdays, we explore the world around us using exciting experiments and awesome activities, all from the comfort of our own homes. So last week, what we did is crafted a butterfly feeder to attract the beautiful butterflies in our own neighborhoods. We learned about nectar and other kinds of butterflies' favorite foods, as well as how butterflies are pollinators in that they help to pollinate flowering plants. Go back and watch it if you'd like some tips on how to turn your backyard into a butterfly oasis. Now for today, we actually get to talk some more about butterflies, but this time we're going in depth on the life cycle of a butterfly. We will be molding the stages of the butterfly life cycle from egg to adult. The adult form, which we know, of course, as being the butterfly. But even better, we are going to be molding them using candy. So it can be an edible treat at the end, or perhaps while you're working. Before we get started, we just have to know a little bit about the process that butterflies go through to gain their wings. And that is called metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is a process of transformation or a change of shape that has at least two distinct phases. For butterflies, their life cycle has four distinct stages. Now, butterflies are not the only kind of bugs that go through metamorphosis. In fact, some other bugs that do are moths, beetles, ants, wasps, dragonflies, and even some amphibians like frogs. So bugs or amphibians that go through this metamorphosis process look quite different when they are young than they do as full-grown adults. And they also tend to eat different types of foods during the different phases of their metamorphosis. So we will talk more specifically about each of the stages in the butterfly's life cycle as we work through the steps today. But for now, let's move on to what we will need for this activity. For this activity, you will need, first you'll need a paper plate, just a nice plain white paper plate is best so that you can draw on it and also label it afterwards if you'd like to. You'll need a marker or pen for labeling, some assorted soft candies and or fruit snacks. Today I have some jelly beans, some fruit and veggie snacks here, some multicolored puzzle piece shaped gummy candies. You can use any kind of gummy candies that you like in any kind of shape. Another option is licorice, which is great for adding antennae. So I'm using some of this peel apart red licorice. You could also use some kind of taffy, toffee, caramel. You may optionally also want some colored pencils, crayons, or felt pens to decorate your plate and just add a little extra pizzazz. And finally, you may optionally want some scissors as well, for example, for trimming the licorice or helping to shape the gummies that you are using. So now we are on to the steps. Step one. Step one is to gather all the materials that you are going to be using. So set out your paper plate, gather the candies and other materials you would like to use for molding the four different stages of the butterfly life cycle. Okay, step two. For step two, we are on stage one of the butterfly life cycle, which is eggs. So butterfly or caterpillar eggs are usually round or oval shaped. Today I'm using jelly beans to represent the eggs, but first I'm going to draw a nice green leaf on the plate for the eggs to rest on. Step three. Step three is stage two in the butterfly's life cycle, and this is called the larva stage. Butterfly larvae are what we commonly know as caterpillars. Have you ever heard the very hungry caterpillar story? 
Well, once caterpillars emerge from their eggs, they are very hungry. So they go out in search of food. And for them, this is leaves to munch on. This starts with the leaf they were born on, which is always something that the caterpillar can eat so that it will help them gain energy to move on to the next leaves. For the caterpillar, I'm going to use some fruit snacks to mold into a squiggly, worm-like shape. Then you can add some little antennae using licorice if you'd like. Trim the licorice down to the size that you would like. Then carefully poke each piece into the gummy shape that you have made until they stick. Perhaps you also want to draw a leaf for your caterpillar to be sitting on or even munching on. Perhaps a you could draw a leaf with a few holes missing from it. Step four. So step four is stage three in the butterfly's life cycle. And this is called the pupal stage, where the caterpillar turns into a pupa. So this stage is the stage in between the caterpillar stage and the butterfly stage. It's where the big transformation happens. As the caterpillar becomes a pupa or chrysalis. The chrysalis is a hardened outer layer or exoskeleton that forms around the pupa. For moths, the pupae are surrounded by a cocoon, and the cocoon, which you may have heard of, is made of silk which the caterpillars spin around themselves to provide protection that they can be wrapped up in while they undergo their transformation. So for butterflies, the hardened outer shell of the chrysalis is the equivalent as to what the cocoon is for the moths. Both of them help to keep the butterfly or the moths protected. The butterfly is going to stay in its pupa form for about 10 to 15 days. And during this time, its insides, such as its internal organs, will break down or turn all mushy and reorganize themselves into their adult form. Kind of gross, but also pretty neat that they're undergoing this full change in their shape and form. The butterfly pupa will then hang itself upside down from a leaf or tree branch, holding on or attached to it by its hind legs. They are usually quite good at blending into their surroundings. So for molding the pupa or the chrysalis, you want to create a cone type shape. And you can also choose to draw a stick on your paper plate, or maybe use a pipe cleaner or even a real stick that you've found outside to represent a branch that the chrysalis is hanging off of. Step five. Step five is stage four, so the last stage in the butterfly's life cycle, the adult stage. Finally, we've reached the adult stage where the butterfly emerges from the chrysalis in its full form, wings and all. It can take a couple of hours after emerging for the butterfly to gain strength and be able to fly. So first it rests for a little while. Then the butterfly will go off to look for a mate and a leaf to lay eggs on. So repeating this life cycle process all over again. The butterfly is the most involved model to make here, as it's definitely the largest and it has a lot going on. So I'm going to start by making the wings and pressing them onto the plate so they kind of stick down a little bit. For the wings, I'm using some of these colorful gummies and I decided to use different colors for the upper wings and lower wings. Next, I'm adding a couple of jelly beans to form the body of the butterfly. A jelly bean for its head. And then finally, I'm adding some licorice again for antennae, just the same as we did for the caterpillar. Then some longer pieces of licorice for the legs. And there are three legs on each side. Decorate your beautiful butterfly model however you would like. And finally, step six. Starting with phase one, the egg phase, go back to each model you have created on your paper plate and label them with a marker or pen. Eggs, larva, pupa, 
and adult. So now you know the four stages of the butterfly life cycle and you got to make them yourself. For a remix on this experiment, get creative with some other household items, edible or not, that you can use to represent the different stages of the butterfly's life cycle. Of the butterfly life cycle. For example, you could try using some dried pasta and beans, for example, dried beans or orzo pasta for the eggs, rotini pasta for caterpillars, shell pasta for the pupa stage, and bow tie pasta for butterflies. You can look at the fruits and veggies that you have in your fridge or on your counter and figure out how you could make those into each stage of the life cycle. For example, using blueberries or really any kind of berries to represent the eggs, maybe green beans for caterpillars, some pea pods, grapes, plums, or figs for the chrysalis, sliced cucumber or mandarin pieces arranged together to make butterfly shapes. Um, you could try other kinds of snack foods that you have in your pantry. For example, I've seen some people use mini marshmallows for the eggs. Gummy worms for caterpillars are an easy one. Perhaps Tootsie Rolls or little chocolates for the chrysalis. And crackers for butterflies. And finally, you can also get creative with your craft supplies, such as using paper cutouts, uh, maybe pom-poms for eggs, pipe cleaners twisted around each other to make caterpillars, or even coffee filters left plain or colored, and then you wrap a pipe cleaner around the middle to cinch it in, and also use the pipe cleaners to add some antennae on there. So those are just a few ideas, but there are so many more that you can come up with. And now for a real world connection. The pupa stage for butterflies and moths is perhaps the most mysterious. As we mentioned, they can be very challenging to find as they blend in really well with their surrounding environment, which is of course to ward off predators and to keep them safe while they're undergoing that part of their transformation. If you'd like to go exploring for a chrysalis or a cocoon, it is recommended that you look for the host plants. And that means the plants that the butterflies typically lay their eggs on as they are the plants that the caterpillars like to eat, which then give the caterpillars energy to go into their next phase of transformation and emerge as butterflies. So the caterpillars and butterflies are going to stay quite close by to their host plants, and that's also where you will typically find the chrysalides or cocoons hanging out. So different species of butterflies and moths have different host plants. For example, monarch butterflies' host plants are any type of milkweed or sand vine, while spring azure butterflies, which are a nice blue butterfly, enjoy dogwood plants, willow leaf meadow sweet, and mountain sweet plants. Look for these host plants as an example, or take a look and do some research on the host plant for the butterfly or moth species that you are looking for. And if you can't find any right on the host plants, take a look around in the surrounding area on any neighboring leaves as well. And if you do happen to find a chrysalis or cocoon, or multiple of them if you're lucky, it's best to look at them and admire them, but leave them be to do their thing. You may also be able to find little tiny eggs on one side of the leaves. So today we learned about the four stages of the butterfly life cycle, from egg to caterpillar to pupa to adult form. We also learned what metamorphosis is and what other kinds of creatures also go through metamorphosis. Next week is the final week of the Backyard Bug series, so don't miss it, because next week we will be putting together our very own wormery in a jar, where we can watch to see how real earthworms break down and mix up soil. I will see you then! Bye, steam team!